hello and welcome back and today is another before you buy and today we're going to talk about before you buy on four bay NASes. A number of you who are looking at network attached storage whether it's your first system or an upgrade from a previous system are looking at four bays and just like in all of my before you buys I'm going to give you five reasons why you should consider a four bay NAS and five reasons why you might want to give one a miss. But before we go a couple of disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost just like my other videos there's still building work happening behind me. Now I'm going to limit the sound as much as I can but some of it might leak through so I apologize in advance. Second thing this is not a video that's going to be I'm going to be trying to talk you in or talk you out of buying anything. There's plenty of solutions out there and I'm sure you'll find the right one. This isn't about sales. It is about helping you guys be as informed as possible before you part with your money. So reason number one that you might want to buy a 4-bay NAS is simply it is a better price you are paying per terabytes. Now what I mean by that is in all of the 4-bays, and again we've got three 4-bays here from uh, QNAP, Asus, Thought and Synology, these systems allow you to install up to four drives inside. Now I say up to, you don't have to install one, uh, you don't have to install all four on day one. You can add one and gradually scale your storage with a number of them having the right kind of storage properties in terms of thin and thick provisioning and the rate configurations that allow you to not only scale your storage over time and add drives as you need them, but on top of that, allow you to, by adding those drives in the example of a RAID 5 or an SHR, to get a better price per terabyte than you would on say a two bay where you put two drives inside and instantly lose 50% of the storage capacity to redundancy. So if you put two 10 TBs inside a two bay, you're paying twice, probably around about 300 odd nicker or 250 to 300 quid per drive for 10 TB. Whereas on these systems, you can install four TB drives and put four of them inside or put four three TB drives inside, which will ultimately give you the same or more storage for the same price. So again, four bays give you a much better uh, price per terabyte and just general overall capacity and redundancy together than the two bay system that we talked about before. Reason number two that you might want to consider a four bay system is that, again, I've touched on a lot of these points in my two bay video, so you're gonna hear a lot of overlay here with regards to their pros and cons and these cons and pros, but that with these systems, you are better equipped to saturate available connections. Now, currently, there are 10 GBE 4 base solutions that are very affordable these days. We've got 2.5 and 5 GBE solutions, and, e, and of course, 1 GBE solutions as well. All of these systems can uh, allow you to saturate, fill that full 100, 250, 500, or 1,000 megabytes per second throughput externally, depending on the network interfaces, with a 4-bay. Whether you are using SSDs or enterprise hard drives with SSD caching, you are just better equipped with a 4-bay four four in 2021 to fully fill that network connection and make sure that all of your connected users on a switch will all get, if they're all on 1GBE, all get their respective 100 or 109 megabytes per second each. Reason number three that you may want to consider a 4-bay NAS, we've already touched on it, a larger array of RAID configurations. 4-bay is when you can pretty much use all of them, the main ones. RAID 0, which is combining all the drives together. You can even do a RAID 1, which you can allow you to add drives. SHR has a fantastic system where you can come up with a triple parity with one drive as a RAID 1 and then add mirror drives along them in the SHR. You've also got RAID 5, a single disk redundancy, RAID 6, a dual disk redundancy, and RAID 10, which utilizes the logic of a RAID 1 and combines dual drives in a RAID 0 environment, allowing you to take potentially up to a two disc failure there, but I would still err towards RAID 6 in a four bay. Reason number four that you may want to look <clears throat> at a four bay NAS solution is it is a great jumping in point for your storage like a choice. If you are looking at buying a network attached storage solution, and you are sort of weighing up your budget, you're looking at um, what am I getting for money, what am I spending, the CPUs on these devices are just where it kicks off. It's where we start to see i7s, it's where we start, oh no, i5s and i3s, it's where we see early Xeons, it's where we see the Ryzen SoC, it's where we see Pentium processors. Across the field of network attached storage, 4Bay is where most of the brands all agree to go, get the better CPU or allow two bay no 
They don't touch it. Two bay, Solera on, and that's the end of the road. But four bay is when you get a better jumping in point for your storage. There's more to play with, more options, and then with that, you have better memory options along with those CPUs, and of course, improved performance internally and externally. Reason number five that you may want to consider a four bay NAS is, as mentioned, a greater range of options. Now, it isn't just that the manufacturers can turn around and say, ah, we'll let you have an i3 this time. But if you look at any brand, and I am talking Synology, QNAP, and Asus Store here, but there are, of course, other brands. If you look at the portfolios of any of them, you go to their little solutions, and they go hardware solutions, click down, go down, and you see the entire portfolio, go to the filter, and click in 4Bay. Generally, 4Bays are where they have the largest range of solutions to choose from, be it with a, a range of CPUs from ARM 32-bit and 64-bits to Intel x86 processors at 64-bit. And of course, we're seeing more and more AMDs make it into that mix as well. Same goes for memory as well. You see a lot more 2, 4, 8, and even 16 gig options. You see a lot more range of network connectivity as well. 4-bay is where you have a larger degree of hardware choice for you, and although some of you might not like too much choice it's worth highlighting that if you've been given a static budget for your business of 1000 2000 3000 etc etc and you've been told you have this much to spend four bays where you can go well, well i'd want to spend that much on a decent cpu or cpu is less important but i want more memory or i want to make sure that i've got better network interfaces so the cpu can kind of take a day off to be honest you can scale your budget on four bays in a way that's just not possible in a bunch of other systems when you go larger then you're paying for that larger space but something else touch on that later on before we go any further Let's talk about five reasons you might not want to look at a four bay, and this might make you want to buy a two bay, it might make you want to go higher, or it might make you just not want to spend money on these anyway <clears throat> and go for Google. So, reason number one do you might not want to go for a four bay NAS? A four bay NAS is where things start to get noisy, and I don't mean noisy like these guys behind me that drive me close to madness. I am talking about, regardless of the fact that we have three very different NASs here in front of me. 4Bay is when you start to hear those click, hums, and whirs of spin up and spin down more notably. 4Bay is where you start to see a lot more metal chassis in your environment. 4Bay is when you start to see dual operating fans on the rear. 4Bay is when you start to see bigger and more business class drives being purchased. Ultimately, all of these factors together result in a system that just generates more clicks, hums, whirs, and background noise than most systems. Not huge, but enough to be noticeable. And that may be a factor for you if you're in close proximity with a system that's going to be spinning up uh, occasionally and just generally irritating you if you're sensitive to noise. Reason number two on these four base systems right now, the reason that you might not want to go for them is there's nowhere near enough 10 GPE options out there. Given that four bays can comfortably saturate above the six or 700 megs. And once you introduce SSD caching, and once you introduce a lot of the adapters that you have multiple drives, and once you introduce expandability of four bays, with four bays generally being largely all expandable in most cases, with only a few rare exceptions, it seems weird to me that there aren't actually that many 10 GBE solutions. Now, fair play to QNAP. <clears throat> they have more than everyone else. Currently in their 4-bay portfolio of desktop systems, for example, there are four 10-bay solutions in their current generations. But that's four out of about 20. Now, they're the ones that seem to be really pushing hard on this, and I do believe there is another 4-bay, 10-bay solution coming soon. But even then, that ratio, considering the performance and ability of these devices, is largely underwhelming. Now, on the other hand, you can look at other brands where they do have 10G solutions out there, but not many Synology have no 4Bay solutions to support 10G. Now, they would argue that 4Bay still isn't quite enough to saturate a 1000 meg connection, but I would say that if you do use drive adapters, if you do use SSD caching, and moreover, if you are using media inside that has a great multi-user access, you look at some of those enterprise drives, the result is that just because you can't saturate one connection at 1000 megs doesn't mean that several users accessing the same storage area with the right media inside 
aren't able to leverage a lot of those benefits. And the limitations we're seeing on four bays at 2.5 GBE and 1 GBE across the majority of systems not factoring in lag is a little underwhelming. Reason number three that you might not go for a four bay NAS, and this is one I personally disagree with. I actually think this is a good thing, but I know I'm not wholly in the majority here, and that is four bays almost always arrive with external PSUs. For those that aren't aware, these systems, when you turn all three round, sorry about the noise there, you will see that all three have got a little power pin in one corner, generally always the bottom corner, in case of Synology, it's like a four pin proprietary one. They've all got little PSU connectors there, and that's because they've all got external PSUs. They don't have the PSU internally. Now, there are uh, obvious benefits and uh, losses from this um, being the setup. So for example, I like external PSUs. I think an external PSU, one, easier to replace if it fails. Two, it removes the heat that it generates from the system and has it externally. Three, you can have a backup around your house that's easier to replace and internal PSUs are a lot more hassle to replace they are a lot more finickety some brands will not allow you to just remove the PSU and send off for a new one under your warranty and you have to send the whole system but I do know there's a lot of people that do not like external PSUs they don't like the a dangly PSU that's hanging out the back of the device where the weight of it can actually remove the PSU from it. They don't like the idea that an external PSU is easier to lose generally in things like transit and stuff like that. And three, external PSUs are generally lower power. When you get uh, about a certain point, generally, I'd say about the above 160, maybe 200 watt mark, that's when you almost always see internal PSUs. But internal PSUs, can generally be improved with cooling. They can be like filtered and their external cage chassis be removed. And a number of people do not like external PSUs. They think it makes unwarranted uh, work for an external PSU to feed it through. And generally, there's a school of thought for some users that external PSUs do not last as long as internal. I disagree. And there's stats to build uh, to back up both sides. But still, there's a lot of people that when they get a 4 bay NAS device and they bought purchased it online will go... Ooh, I don't like this external power brick. So it's definitely worth factor for some of you worth considering an R5x5. Reason number four. So you might not want to buy a four bay NAS and I'm looking towards my notes because I want to, again, just like before, phrase this right. When it comes to four bay NASs, although there is that tremendous range of options available with the CPUs, you do pay what I would closely consider as the RAID 5 tax. When you buy a, um, a, five, uh, a four bay we mentioned in my previous two bay video that if you look at most two and four bay NAS ranges from all of the NAS range uh, NAS brands out there, you find in the 20 plus series, in the locker store series, in the 5.1 or 5D series, there's, there's a two bay and a four bay in that range. They are identical. The only difference being two drives more. That's it. The two drives inside there. And those two drives there, they've got little SATA connectors in there, but the CPU, the memory, the connections, everything about it is largely the same. Yes, it's a slightly bigger chassis, but the, the design is there, and a lot of these companies use re, the same chassis across multiple devices in their ranges. The result is that four bays kind of have this inherent extra payment of between 100 to 150 pounds more, where you're paying more to pay more money for drives. Yes, you're paying more for an overall um, extra capacity. Yes, there is the inherent benefits of those other rate configurations, but you're not getting any better hardware in any other way. You're just getting a slightly bigger chassis and two extra SATA ports inside, which literally cost pence. So the result is that a, five, a four bay for a number of people, you may be put off by that extra spend for what is ostensibly just these two bays here being popped on the side. So it's worth bearing that in mind if you are on a tight budget that a four bay, the money you're spending, and it becomes even more apparent when you look at more budget solutions that use ARM processors on their two and four bays, that a large chunk of the money you are spending is for two empty bays of storage, which you then may or may not fill. So do make sure if you're buying a four bay, that you are going to utilize those bays. Even if it's hypothetical, that's better than nothing. Because if you're not, you're kind of paying the RAID 5 tax. 
The last reason that you may not want to go for a 4 bay NAS solution right now, and again, reason number five, is only a single PSU. Now, to date, I only know of two NASs that have ever subverted this expectation. Now, 4 bays, again, yes, they are considered, you know, Soho, SMB kind of user, the middle, so home, prosumer, and the small, medium business there in the middle, but 4 bay desktop NASs, generally only ever have one PSU. Now, I've talked about it before on the channel. The PSU on an NAS is the second most frail part after the storage media. And again, there's lots of variables behind that. But the PSU, if the PSU fails, it breaks, it busts, it overheats, it just fails, then the whole system's kaputski. doesn't matter if you're running uh, from a, um, uh, uh, what's it, a UPS in the background. It doesn't matter if you've got that because the PSU, if that fails, it's game over. Now, rack mount users have enjoyed dual PSUs or redundant PSUs for many, many years now. But desktop users, with the exception of two viable um, alternatives, have always been one PSU. And if you care about safety nets, if you care, because you're going for a RAID 5 box anyway, so it must be a consideration, a single PSU is going to be off-putting. Now, I mentioned those two uh, exceptions. One was the Ficus um, N5810 Pro. That was one of the only overtly clear um, dual PSU and battery-supported um, NASs I've seen, other than the Drobo, of course, which had the battery but not the two PSU model. But the ability to have two PSUs on a desktop, very, very appealing. The other one, of course, as we've mentioned before, is the WD Pro, uh, WD MyCloud Pro series that had two PSU ports on the rear, but you had to go out and buy a secondary PSU. So, again, a number of you that care about redundancy, and it's one of the main reasons you've gone for a four bay, maybe you've already got a UPS in your house, the idea of a single PSU being, no, there's no fallback on that, may be off-putting to you. And yes, of course, you can have another one on the shelf that we talked about, plug it in and Bob's your uncle, you're done. But there's still no avoiding that if that PSU fails then you could have data corruption you could have active transfers uh, uh receiving even not the full pack of data or just generally corrupting and be overlooked later so do 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 bear that in mind and of course if you are someone of a frame of mind where redundant psus are just a given next to ecc memory and ups's a four bay desktop may not be for you but this has been uh, before you buy on 4Bay NAS Solutions. If you have enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe and visit the link in the description. There's links to our NAS compares to everything we talked about today. But otherwise, I will see you next time.